How's it going guys? We have a past level question for cardio for step one and two. I'm not gonna make a lengthy clip here, tell you exactly what you need to know, not waste our time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 22 year old woman, she has a four day history of shortness of breath and exertion, swelling of her feet, no past medical history apart from an upper respiratory tract viral infection two weeks ago that self resolved. Temperature 98.6 Fahrenheit. Heart rate 110, respiratory rate 22, blood pressure 85 on 60. Cardiopulmonary examination shows JVD by basal or crackles in the lung field. It's a point of maximal impulse in the anterior auxiliary line. There's an S3 heart sound. Echo is most likely to show which of the following. So uh, let's just walk through the answer choices here. Because there's a lot we can unpack in this vignette, but I'll just go through the answers as our mechanism for this question. So choice A, acute decompensation of bicuspid aortic valve, wrong fucking answer. Okay, the, so this would refer to aortic stenosis, which we don't have a mid-systolic murmur here or a late peaking systolic murmur with an ejection click. Okay, that's aortic stenosis. Not mid-systolic click, that's mitral valve prolapse, but uh, late peaking systolic murmur with ejection click or mid-systolic murmur. Nothing about that here. Long discussion about bicuspid aortic valve. It need not be Turner syndrome. It can be autosomal dominant familial and it can occur in pediatric vignettes. Uh, it doesn't need to only present following calcification later in life. That's an erroneous assumption for you assimilate. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, asymmetric septal hypertrophy, wrong answer. This refers to Hockham, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Uh, obviously, this is your stereotypical young athlete, uh, sudden death, okay, on the soccer field. Uh, this, for you assimilate, high yield point you need to know is that this will be a systolic murmur that worsens with valsalva slash standing, okay? So if you decrease preload in the heart, that will worsen Hockham as well as mitral valve prolapse. The other murmurs will either soften or experience no change. So that's how you differentiate aortic stenosis from Hockham, okay? If they tell you valsalva, uh, there's no change in the murmur with valsalva, that would be bicuspid aortic valve, aortic stenosis, not Hockham, which as I just fucking said, would get worse with valsalva or standing. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, ballooning dyskinesia of the left ventricular apex, wrong answer. This could refer to an obscure condition known as Takatsubu, uh, Takatsubu cardiomyopathy, okay? The yieldness is non-existent. Not Takayasu arteritis, that's different. Takatsubu, it's some stress-mediated cardiomyopathy that can cause a quote-unquote apical ballooning of the left ventricle, and sometimes it'll pop up in resources as, as if it's like, as if it has yieldness non-existent. Uh, obviously, if we had a uh, an infarct of the LAD, left anterior descending artery, and then we could consider an isolated dyskinesia of left ventricular apex, but that's not the best answer in this case. So the correct answer is dilatation of the ventricles with diffuse hypokinesia. The diagnosis here is Coxsackie B virus induced cardiomyopathy. Okay, you need to know Coxsackie B causes DCM. It's past level, as I prefaced with. There was a recent infection. Okay, so S3 heart sound. This 29 out of 30 questions will refer to systolic dysfunction. Yes, it can be pregnancy and high endurance athletes, but when we talk about actual pathology, 29 out of 30 times is going to be systolic dysfunction. There's one fucking obscure question on one of the new clinical master series forms for 2CK, internal medicine form 7 or 8, where they give an S three heart sound with diastolic dysfunction. It's fucking nonsense, and I swear it's erratum. The internet doesn't say anything about it. 29 30 times. This is buzzy for systolic dysfunction. Okay, S4 heart sound, diastolic dysfunction. So as I said, Coxsackie B can induce DCM. Let's just run through the last answer choice here. Preserved ejection fraction, wrong fucking answer, because in systolic dysfunction, we have decreased ejection fraction. Preserved ejection fraction is hallmark for diastolic dysfunction. Okay, so that's really high yield. So diastolic dysfunction is, is no change ejection fraction, increased left ventricular pressure, no change left ventricular volume, okay? So you say, but wait, there's if the heart can't expand, isn't there less volume? No, no, no. You can achieve the same volume, you just require more pressure to get there. Whereas systolic dysfunction is decreased ejection fraction, increased left ventricular pressure, increased left ventricular volume. You know the deal, I'm gonna continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.